Good evening, caller. You know what the Bible say? Yeah. Yeah, I was one to ask. Turn, turn your TV down, please. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Uh, uh, I thought I heard you guys say that um, uh, that the Holy Ghost was um, not here anymore. Is that what, is that what you say? In a direct sense. I say, in a direct sense, I don't believe the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit directly operates on individuals today. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. Okay, do you have? I can't hear you. Is that is that? Is that? Are we in agreement on that or? In agreement on what? I didn't hear what he said. The, The Holy Spirit is not. Here today, in a direct sense, in other words, he only operates through the word. He doesn't do. He doesn't. He's not operating miraculously, supernaturally. I don't know about the supernatural part. I'm talking about miracles. When I say supernatural, I don't know about that part, I, I can only say that it, it, it's supposed to lead and guide you. But now, uh, now you're but, trying to tell me that the Spirit of God, Jesus said, He must descend that the Holy Spirit come. Who was he talking to when he said that? Who was he talking to when he said it? Yes. He was speaking in the Bible. He had wrote the Bible. Well, his Bible hadn't been written yet. He was speaking to uh, the Jewish people. He was talking to his disciples, specifically to, to the apostles. People? No, to the he was talking to the apostles. And the reason why is because... Were they, Jews? Were they Jews? Yes, but, but not all Jews. He wasn't talking to all Jews. He was talking to a specific group because they were the ones that were going to be witnesses of his resurrection, you know, throughout... Uh, Judea and Samaria and other parts of the earth. So, and this Holy Ghost is not here. It was here once, but it's not here no more. He's not. He, he's not acting. He's not operating today like he did in the first century. No, sir. But did Jesus have the Holy Ghost? Yes. Have have Holy Ghost. But Jesus is not here today like he was then either, is he? That's right. He's not. So, why can't the Holy Spirit do His work and then be done with it? Why does He have to stay here? Why does the Holy Spirit have to stay here once He's done His work? Well, didn't I hear you say He would lead and guide you? Yes. All truths? But Didn't you make a statement in the Word saying that He will lead and guide you through all truths? And what is all truth? The Word of God. Okay, so if we are have if we have the Bible... We have all truth right here. Can we say that the Holy Spirit is guiding us through all truth? I can say the words of God is guiding us. Okay. Oh, the Spirit itself. But the uh, but the Spirit is a Spirit that we can't see. The Spirit we can't see. It. I understand that. I, that He believes He He leads and guides us. I but believe that. How, how does He do it? How does He do it? How, he's a Spirit. I don't know how the uh, Holy, Holy Ghost leads well, and guides us. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do you know about the Holy Spirit that you didn't learn from the book? What do I know about the Holy Spirit that I didn't learn from the book? Right. I didn't know anything about Jesus except what I learned from the book. All right. Man. So you see what I'm saying? Why do people want they elevate the Holy Spirit and have him doing something above the word, but you wouldn't even know about the Holy Spirit if it hadn't been for the revealed word. Hey Amen. The word tells me that if I can look out here in this earth and see that God himself exists. Why can't I look out here in the earth and see that the Holy Spirit exists? What do you, what, what do you see in the earth that tells you the Holy Spirit exists? The psalmist said that the, the same thing I look and see that God exists. So you can look at, you can God, know that. The, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, the three entities, but they are as one. Sir, tell, now listen, the, the psalmist said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. Now you don't know anything about God other than he is greater than you. That, that's, the, that's the testimony of the, of the creation. But by looking at creation, you know that there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? 
That's what I read. Now, how do you know that by looking at nature? By reading God's Word. Okay, so you can't do it by looking at nature. You have to use God's Word. That's all we can... Well, all we have is hope. Then we got to deal with hope and uh, faith and hope. No, sir. That's no, all we have. But, but now, we're, then, we're, are, we, are we moving to another subject? For one group to say that it's above or no more than the other group, he is wrong to say that because all we have is faith and hope. We hope that we're doing right. I don't, I don't hope that I'm doing right. I know that I'm doing right. Sir, where does faith... No, all you have is hope, bro. Sir, where does faith come from? Where does faith come from? Does the Holy Spirit bring that to you directly? The Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Okay, sir, let me ask you. Does the Holy Spirit bring faith to you directly? Does the Holy Ghost... Can I say that again? Does the Holy Spirit bring faith to you directly? No, I, I didn't say that. I said that... Okay, my question was, where does faith come from? I'm telling you what faith means. Well, I, that's not what I asked God. you, though. I asked you, where does faith come from? Oh, I know it comes from God. What do you think faith comes okay. from? Okay. All right, Romans 10, Romans 17. 10, 17. Okay, now what does it say? Faith come by hearing. Can you read the, the screen? Can you see the TV? I see where you're going with that. Okay, so... Okay, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Okay, now if the Holy Spirit gave the apostles the words, the, the revelation that God wanted mankind to know, and they wrote it down, and we have it, now couldn't we say that the Holy Spirit gives us faith through the written Word? It's not a direct operation. Well, see, I'm one of those believers that uh, I believe in election predestination. I believe that it's already been established. Only God knows. I don't know who's, who's going to be saved, but I believe God knows. Okay. I just hope that I'm going to be saved. Okay, well. I hope you're going to be saved. But, but why do you even worry about then if God has already pre predetermined all that? Which we're getting off on another hey, subject hey, he's here. already predetermined. I'm not going to limit my God. My God is not, has no limitation. God okay. is powerful. He knows more than we do. Uh, and. All-knowing. Well, all sir, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if it's impossible for us to know, then you can never be made free. Say that again. You, you've uh, got a delay. John, My TV is down, but you have okay. got a delay from you for some okay, reason. Okay, just right. listen to the, to the phone. I'm listening to the phone. Okay, okay Jesus said, John 8, 32, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, if it's impossible for us to know the truth, then how are you ever going to be made free? Through the Word of God is all I know, that I have the faith of what I read and study and understand that what God has revealed to me. Okay. Okay. So, so you see what I'm saying, sir? What we're getting at is everything that you're saying comes from what you have read in the Bible. Now, everything about hope, everything faith. I know about the Bible, I've read it for myself. Right. Exactly. And so the Spirit didn't do anything for you, to you, close to you, whatever. He didn't do anything for you except through this book right here. So you tell me, so where is the Holy Spirit at now then? The Holy Spirit right now? Yeah. He's, he's in heaven. Where's Jesus? I've never read that in the Bible where it said the Holy Spirit is in heaven. Well, tell me what, tell me, tell me where you read in the Bible that He's still here doing what He once did. Well, I can tell you what He said. He said He will lead you and guide you through all truths. So I can tell well, you. Well, is this all truth? The Bible says. The Bible also says that this is all truth. Jude three. Okay. So, if He guides you into all truth, and He's yeah. given it to you, why do you still need the Holy Spirit? In a direct form. You can guide me to all truths. So you can... That's the so, reason you can guide me to the truth of what I've read. So, so here's the thing, sir. So in other words, the Holy Spirit wrote the instruction down for you. And uh, now you need the Holy Spirit to tell you what it means. The prophets, the prophets and apostles wrote, wrote the scriptures down. But, but they the did it. The Spirit reveals to me whether or not that's true or not. But sir, no. The Holy Spirit guided them to write these things. The Holy Spirit guided, guided them into all truth. of God, that's right. All right. Yeah, 2 Timothy 3, 16. And, and holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So here is what the Holy Spirit guided, guided them to write down. 
for then, for then. You're right. They brought it for them for then. Now, since we got the Bible, now that we have the Bible, we read it for ourselves, and the Spirit witness uh, with my spirit that what I'm saying, what I'm reading is true. No, the Spirit, uh, Romans 8 is what you're quoting there, but what I'm saying is the Spirit has given you the instruction right here. Now, why does the Spirit need to tell you what it means? If He gave you the instruction, don't you think that it could be written in a way that you can understand it? That's what it does. See, the Bible said over in Isaiah 53, said, Who has believed our report? And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now, first you've got to believe the report was being read. Then the Spirit leads and guides you through all truths in that word. No, no. The Spirit does not directly lead and guide you in all truth. That's what you think it does. No. But I'm telling you that it, the Spirit sir, is still here. You say it is not sir, here. Sir, if, if the Spirit is here, the spirit if is you, here. sir, if you have a direct, if you have the Spirit working directly on you, demonstrate it. Because in the Bible, every time someone had the the Spirit directly operating through them, they did a miracle. I'm proving to you right now through my words that I'm speaking to you that I know what I'm talking about because I believe and truly believe Sir, that you're wrong. Do you have, uh, do you, so do you have the I Spirit know, working on you directly? The Spirit is not here because you, it had not been written in that Bible saying Sir, that Sir, that, Sir, uh, Sir. Do, you, do you have the Spirit working directly through you now? Is that what you're telling us? The Spirit is not always with you at all times. But when the, when the, when the Holy Spirit falls on down on you, I'm going to say it like that, uh, you'll be able to have sit down and have a conversation like we're doing. So are, do you have the Holy Spirit uh, on you right now? Huh? Do you have the Holy Spirit on you right now? Do you have... The Spirit of God in me. But ha you said... You said when he falls on you, we can have a conversation like we're doing now. And we're having a conversation now, so has the Holy Spirit fallen on you? I have the Spirit of God in me where I can talk about it. I've read his word. I know, uh, I don't know everything about his word, but what, I know what I know. What, what is he doing for you? What is he doing for you? What's the Spirit doing for you? What does the Spirit do for me? No, what is he doing for you now? He lets me know whether or not you're telling the truth. And how does he do that? By me reading his word. Okay. To what you're saying. All right. But, to, go, but, no. Sir, I'm but no, here's the thing. I'm trying sir. to what you're saying. If you're, what, what you're saying don't line up with the word of God, I'm not going for it. Okay, but here, and, and, and that's fine. That's exactly what we say, sir. But you are going by the word, not the spirit. You're going by the spirit's words, not the spirit. That's exactly what we're saying. The Spirit, mm -hmm. the I Spirit... Do. You're absolutely right. I'm going by the Word, but I'm absolutely being led by that Spirit to understand the Sir, word. no. That's you, not, Sir, you wouldn't know anything... Sir, you wouldn't... Sir, sir you wouldn't know anything about the Spirit if you hadn't read the Word. So you mean tell me that you read, you read the Word, you find out about the Spirit... And then the Spirit uh, helps you read the word. The said, Faith by hearing. Not just because I read it, I hear okay. it too. So you right. more than just one thing. You Sir. can hear it and read it. All right, but here's That's the thing. You're, you're, missing, here's, you're missing my point. Well, my, I agree. What you say? My, my point is this. What you're telling me is you read the Bible. That's right. And then you learned about the Holy Spirit. And That's then right. when you learned about the Holy Spirit, now all of a sudden you read the Bible and you learn something. Well, you learned something before you ever learned about the Holy Spirit. You learned about the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit's help. That's you saying that, but I see it. How did you I, learn about the Holy Spirit? I wish, I wish God would show you, and you just hadn't got to that point. Let God elevate you to that sir, point. Sir, sir, you're missing in Paul said, No, there's, not, there's nothing I'm missing in my life. Paul said in Ephesians 3, verse 4, whereby when you read, you can understand my knowledge. Now, Paul didn't say when by when you read, you get the Holy Spirit explaining things to you. He said when you read, you can understand. But the what you're... The mystery has been revealed through the Word of God now. There's no mystery. I, I understand. Okay. <sighs> okay, sir. Yeah. Everything you're telling us, you're telling us you learned it from the Word, and that's fine. We agree with that. But don't tell us that, that the Spirit now... God hasn't revealed to you yet. 
Okay. All right. Well, we appreciate your call. We, we've been on you with 15 minutes, so we, we need to move along so we can get on. But I appreciate your call. Okay. I want to say this, uh, and then I'll leave you alone, if you don't mind. That's fine. Uh, I just pray that God was reveal this stuff to you. You can talk about me after you're gone, but if God don't ever reveal this stuff to you, you ain't gonna never understand it. See, you're thinking you're right about everything, but you're not right about everything. Well, you think don't you're right about everything. So, Ain't there the one good person to ever come in this world? That was Jesus Christ. I never I never claimed to be perfect, sinlessly perfect. Well, you're saying that being in, 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 uh, in the organization that you're abiding with, that you're perfect. Well, I think you are. Well, sir. Well, Paul said, Paul said presenting every man perfect in Christ. Now, can we be perfect in Christ? No. Well, Paul said we can. Not in this lifetime. Paul, no, Paul said we can. Yes, sir, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, My speech and Book my preaching. Book of James tells us uh, there are two types of sin. There's a sin under death and a sin not under death. That sin under death is the one that you act upon. And the one not under death is one that comes into your mind. So you were sinning all the time when sin comes into your mind. So you ain't going to tell me that you're perfect or that you can even live perfect. It'll never happen. Okay. Thank you. All right. All thank right. you.